the interactions arise from the interactions of two different species is called interspecific commensalism one is benefited the other one is neither benefited nor harmed otis predation it is a type of interaction in which one organism is benefited the other is harmed the species benefited is predator and the one which is harmed is prey hello dear students welcome back to session 6 of this interesting chapter called organism and population hope you remember in the last session session 5 of this chapter we learned about what is population density and what are the four important factors which is going to affect the population density moving on to the remaining concepts of this chapter by seeing this beautiful picture you would have made a guess yes i am going to discuss about a very important population interaction that is called predation predation predator prey concept is from time memorial so moving on to the very important concepts of this session as we know that evolution of life history traits so what is the most important area of research for ecologists in ecology it is the evolution of life history traits in the study of the evolution of life uh, that is the history traits in different species as i said in today's session we'll be discussing about very important population interactions so what do you mean by population interaction the very word itself will tell you the interactions that arise from the interactions of two different species is called interaction population interaction so it is an interaction between the two species two different species is called as population interaction so what are the types of uh, population interactions there are two types one is called interspecific interaction the other one is called intraspecific interactions so what is interspecific the interactions arise from the interactions of two different species is called interspecific and what do you mean by intraspecific there are two types that is called intraspecific and interspecific if the interaction is between the same species it is called intraspecific interaction if the interaction is between two different species it is called interspecific interaction so population interactions here is of two types one is called intraspecific and the other one is called interspecific so here the interactions may be beneficial or detrimental and neutral uh, interspecific interaction so what are the types of interspecific interactions so what is interspecific interaction the interactions that arise from the interactions of two different species if it is the interaction between the same species then we will use the word called intraspecific now what are the types of interspecific interactions they and here the interspecific interactions may be beneficial or it might be detrimental or it might be neutral interactions so as i said the most important area of research for ecologists is what evolution of life history study of evolution of life history traits in different species so what is population interaction the interaction that arise from the interactions of two different species is called population interactions and there are two types one is called intraspecific interaction the other one is called interspecific interaction what is intraspecific interaction it is the interaction between the same species whereas in case of interspecific it is the interaction between two different species and these interspecific interactions may be beneficial or detrimental or harmful on neutral interspe interspecific interactions now both now let us understand what are the possible outcomes of interspecific interactions so what are the benefits of interspecific interaction so here both species benefit in mutualism here both are benefited here both 
the two different species which are interacting with each other will be benefited so both species lose in competition why because there are two different species the mode of um, uh, habit food habit will be different uh, habitat will be different so here we find that the species both the species lose in competition and in parasitism and predation one species is benefited the other loses i think all of us know in case of parasitism which is uh, an interaction between the host and the parasite in case of predation the two interactions is between the predator and the prey so in this type of interaction we find that one is benefited the other one is not benefited or you can say the other loses here in case of uh, parasitic uh, uh, interaction we find that the parasite is benefited but the host is not benefited it may lose but whereas in case of predator and prey concept or interaction the predator is benefited but the prey is harmed so in commensalism in commensalism which is also one of the population interaction one species is benefited the other species is neither benefited nor harm so what are the population interactions as i said the population interactions will be like parasitism then it will be commensalism mutualism amensalism right amensalism so here these are all the different types of parasitism commensalism mutualism amensalism here we find in commensalism one species is benefited the other species is neither benefited nor harmed here like for example one is benefited the other one is zero what i mean by plus plus both are benefited if it is plus minus one is benefited plus means benefited minus means harmed here you can see neither benefited nor harmed here plus and minus in case of parasitism and predation it is plus and minus so one is benefited the other one is harmed in case of commensalism one is benefited the other is neither benefited nor harmed right and in amensalism one species is harmed the other species is unaffected so it is in amensalism it is minus 0 that is one is affected harm and the other species is unaffected so these are the symbols what we use for writing the population interaction so the possible outcomes of interspecific interactions will be where both species benefit in mutualism both species lose in competition whereas in parasitism and predation one species is benefited the other loses and in commensalism one is benefited the other one is neither benefited nor harmed whereas in amensalism one species is harmed the other species is unaffected here you can see in this beautiful picture the picture of predation a very important population interaction between a tiger and a deer so what is predation predator and prey concept is from time immemorial as you know like you know to live the organ the animals need to hunt and eat prey upon the other animals survival of the fittest so what is predation it is a type of interaction in which one organism is benefited and the other is harmed what is predation it is a type of interaction in which one organism is benefited the other is harmed the species benefited is predator and the one which is harmed is prey here this is the prey the deer is the prey and the tiger is the predator so this is benefited and this is harmed so here we can find that in uh, predation it is a type of interaction in which one organism is benefited and the other is harmed in and the species benefited is called as predator and the one which is harmed is prey what are the examples you are going to give for this predation you can give an example of a tiger and a deer which is given here or a sparrow eating a nut here sparrow is the predator and nut is the prey animals feeding the plants so predators are called conduits because 
predators help to transfer energy to different trophic levels in an ecosystem yes of course so whatever energy is found in the this uh, deer and deer has got the energy from the plants so it is transferred from one trophic level to the other trophic level so as you know there are four trophic levels there are four trophic levels that is the producers primary consumers secondary consumers secondary consumers and tertiary consumers so here for example like producers are the plants when the energy is transferred from the plants to the tertiary consumers the same amount of energy is not transferred but of course the energy is transferred from one level to another level so predators are called as convicts because predators help to transfer energy to different trophic levels in an ecosystem moving on to the role of predation in an ecosystem predator balance particularly it is very important for the predator balance or to check prey population imagine if rats were in large number as you know the rats are going to destroy the crops grown by the farmers and imagine if snakes were not there so to maintain the ecological balance predator prey concept is very very important so to maintain the ecological balance this need to happen predation need to happen in an ecosystem so they are mediators or conduits by transferring energy to different trophic levels as i said predation also helps in the transfer of energy from one trophic level to the other trophic level here you can see the sparrow eating the prey so here sparrow is called as a predator and this insect is called as a prey so here predator is benefited but but the prey is harmed so here the predator is benefited and the prey is harmed so they help in maintaining species diversity in a community by reducing competition between the prey species predator balance as i said they help in maintaining species diversity in a community by reducing competition between prey species prey species competition a predator avoids the intensity of interspecific competition and maintains species diversity so what is the advantage of this type of competition a predator avoids the intensity of the interspecific competition and maintain species diversity we can give a good number of example like for example take the piaster or starfish is a predator in the coast of specific ocean in america in america when removed more than uh, 10 species of invertebrates to become extinct in one year because of interspecific competition so this is a very good example right then predators are over active in nature as we know that prey species are balanced by predators in nature and when it becomes over active it exploits the prey obviously if it is you know the prey also should be in equal number and the predator also should be in equal number suppose if the number of prey reduces obviously it is going to affect the predator so there is an imbalance in the ecological balance of the predators and the prey so prey species are balanced by predators in nature when it becomes overactive it exploit when it exploits the prey so the prey soon gets what extinct so there will be non availability of the prey and obviously the predators are going to die because of the shortage of food so even the predator also gets extinct so when prey gets extinct obviously the predator also gets extinct due to lack of food so we say that predator become prudent so very very important concept this predation is a very very important population interaction moving on to the prey species lesson the impact of predation by prey defense mechanism i think all of us know suppose if a predator goes to the go, goes near the prey 
Will the prey will simply invite the predator? No, definitely not. It will try to come out with certain strategies to avoid being eaten by the predator. Now let us see what with a few examples how they try to overcome this predation. So a few species of frogs, I think all of us know many animals uh, like we have come across many animals will uh, try to uh, implicate what we call it as camouflaging so that they can uh, uh, camouflage themselves and uh, like you know they will uh, they change their body color to the external background so that they will not be identified by the predators. So for example like this few species of frogs and insects escape from the notice of the predators by cryptical color called camouflaging. Here you can see, see here both the frog and the water color is the same. So this is one form of what? Camouflaging. Here this is this plant Calotropis produces toxic substance which is released by the plant to avoid the grazing animals. So this is an example of Calotropis. And this is the example of frog. As I said, the prey will not easily be uh, prone to the predators. It will come out with certain strategies to be avoided by being eaten by the predators. Like few frogs will try to camouflage themselves, uh, try to adjust their body color to the external background so that they will not be easily identified by the predators and then get themselves saved from the predators. So, for example, like we take one more example. This is an example which is usually asked in the examination. A butterfly called monarch butterfly and you know the caterpillar of this monarch butterfly uh, feeds on a poisonous weed and develops special chemical which is distasteful to its predator bird. See when the insect itself, when the butterfly itself is distasteful then definitely the bird will not eat it and how will the monarch butterfly protect itself from the predator birds by developing what a poisonous substance particularly in the caterpillar stage by feeding on a particular plant which releases certain chemical substance and that enters the caterpillar and when it get metamorphosized uh, into a butterfly and when by chance and, and uh, when the predator bird comes to eat it then definitely it will not eat this monarch butterfly because the insect is distasteful because of the chemical or the toxic substance that it has gained during the caterpillar stage. And presence of thorns in acacia and cactus. Yes, of course, you yeah, already have come across that in acacia and uh, cactus have pointed thorns. So that is one mechanism to avoid being eaten by the uh, browsing animals. Then one more as I, as I gave an example of Calotropis will, which will produce poisonous cardiac glycosides and avoids being grazed. And we come across a wide variety of chemical substances like nicotine, caffeine, etc. Opium which are produced by the plants to protect themselves from the grazing animals. So uh, these chemicals make them sick and cause indigestion, disrupt reproduction or even kill the predators. So all these are the mechanisms or the strategies which the prey will come across to be uh, to avoid being eaten by the predator. Hope you have understood all the concepts what I have explained in today's session. So I will be back with some more uh, examples of population interactions in the coming sessions. So with that I think hope you have understood all the concepts what I have explained in today's session and all the population interactions what I am discussing in this particular session in this particular chapter is very important from examination point of view. So I will be back with some more interesting concepts till then goodbye and thank you.